Alright guys, I'm coming to you guys with a video today that I don't typically do, but I know a lot of people have been asking me for tips and stuff, so I figured this is probably the best way for me to do it. I'm basically going to go over the top 5 tips that I think are, are going to immediately improve your gameplay in my eyes. Like, I think these are the most important tips. Obviously there's a lot more, but these are my top 5. So I'm going to cover these and basically try to help you guys out when it comes to climbing the ranks and basically improving your gameplay every day. Uh, before the video starts, I do try to stream every day at 6 o'clock east on Twitch. My Twitch will be in the description, and it'll probably be on screen right about now. So I want to just throw that out there now before I get into the video, and uh, hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so the first tip I'm going to be covering, I think personally, is the most important tip, which is droning slash cam work. Uh, I personally feel that this this alone can save and basically win you a bunch of rounds If you're able to get on drones as an attacker and basically get an idea of where people are Where utility is and anything like that You're gonna be in a lot better position than if you're just going into the round joining something at the very beginning of the round Maybe and then just like that being the end of it because then people obviously move they have legs I've, I say this a lot to my friends whenever I give call outs, but people have legs so you have to you have to take that into mind. So if you're able to get on drones, maybe in cams and stuff, not just at the beginning of the round, but late round, mid round, all that kind of thing, it will drastically improve your gameplay. I think this is the, probably one of the biggest aspects in the game because you're able to identify utility, identify what kind of operators you're going against. So you're not going in blind. That way you can like prepare like say if there's a capkin per se, you don't hit any capkin traps because you know he's on the board, so you're gonna be more worried of him. Uh, if you have a bandit on the board, you're gonna be more worried about a bandit because you know hey. I need Thatcher this to coordinate so we can get this wall open. And if you're like, say you're on defense, you have to prepare. Maybe there's a shield. Maybe your team can set now set up crosses because you got on cams early and you've seen that they have a shield. Anything like that, it's super important uh, to basically have any of that kind of intel. Um, the next thing in late round situations, if you're in clutches and like, or say you even have man count, if you get on a drone, even if you're in a 2v3 or a 5v2, anything like that, and just find out where the last people are, it can basically win you the round just because you know where they are instead of going in blindly and just relying on basically your gun skill. So I feel like this is honestly the most important factor. Uh, it also is going to probably get you into better stacks. Uh, good players, they love having intel, they love having that kind of thing. Someone like you and your their stack, if you're droning, it's going to be make you more wantable to play with because people like that kind of thing. Someone who's going to be able to get on cams and basically just give them intel so they can go frag out. So maybe you're not the best aimer, but if you're able to sit there on drones and basically feed out call to your team, you're going to be in a lot better position to get into better 5 stacks and basically climb the ranks that way if that's just how you want to be. The next step that I'm going to cover is one that's also important in this current meta, which is utility usage. Um, this is just the way this meta has been, there's a lot of shields and indestructible guys that you need to use explosives on, so you have to make sure as an attacker that you're very wary of how you use your utility, making sure that you use your flash grenades effectively and not just throwing them to throw them, make sure that you're actually using them to burn stuff, and like if you have grenades, make sure not to waste those on ADSs, let your other teammates use their uh, flashes and stuff to burn the ADS while you use your just nades to destroy stuff. Um, this is all back to tip number one. You have to identify the gadgets, which is very important. So you have to make sure that you drone it out, identify what gadgets need to be burned, use your utility, and then have it destroyed, all that other stuff. And for a defending standpoint, you have to make sure that you're either stalling time, denying plants, and anything, all that good stuff. So make sure you use utility, like make sure you have your maestro cams have ADSs, make sure that your mirrors are banded, make sure all that good stuff so the attackers can't just take it without having to use a lot of utility on it. Um, make sure you also have to make sure as an attacker that you're not just burning utility, you're running useful operators. Don't run IQ if Valkyrie and Echo are banned. Make sure you run something that can actually burn utility because in this current meta, it's it's pretty much the biggest thing. There's just so much stuff that's on the board that the defenders have that you have to make sure that you're running important ops. That way you're able to get all the stuff that you need to. That way you have a safe and smooth execute. Um, but that being said, if you do have extra flash grenades after all of the pushes and stuff are done, Make sure that you use those things to capitalize on free kills. If you know someone's in a corner, flash grenade them. Don't just swing them to try and die or take a gunfight that you need to. Make sure you use the flashes, that kind of thing, because it can it makes it a lot easier than trying to just take a gunfight that you don't have to. As a defender, make sure that you're using your utility, your nitros, your smokes, any of that. Make sure you use that to actually deny the plant and don't just like throw them to throw them. And make sure, like, if you can get free kills off of it, great, but don't rely on it as your main source, obviously. But I feel like if this is something that you can master, you'll be a great player in another way to basically climb the ranks and improve your gameplays, like, dramatically. 
Alright, so for the next tip, I'm going to be covering finding a sensitivity for you and basically training, not all the time, but at least daily, I'd say, in my opinion, and making sure that you can hit shots and just important things that I feel are important in a game like Rainbow Six Siege. Obviously, as you know, there is no aim assist, so you need to be able to have a sensitivity that you're comfortable with and be able to hit shots on. Uh, basically for me on PC and on console, sitting in T-Hunt for a couple of hours and just messing around with sensitivity so I found something that I felt comfortable and fluid that I have to keep overcorrecting, and that eventually that I didn't change because I feel like changing your sensitivity a lot does effectively like mess with your aim and ruin it a bit. So I feel like this is something that you should just like if you find a sensitivity that you're comfortable with, even if you have a bad day, you just have to stick it through because uh, obviously bad days happen. It's just how the game goes. It's just how days are sometimes. So you just have to stick with it on uh, training for your aim honestly at one pc i use kovacs um I, this is obviously not an option for you if you're playing a console if this is something that you can't do then obviously just i'd recommend t hunt i spend a lot of time in both in like my own way because like i load up my pc i'll spend about 10 20 minutes just playing kovacs and just working on my aim and just until i feel comfortable and then once after i'm done with that i'll load up rainbow six siege and actually start playing t hunt as well because uh, honestly Kovacs it helps you for your aim but like it doesn't help you with your movement and you have to be able to move and lean and not look like a bot when you walk so I, I use I use both in my opinion it's just on console obviously you don't have Kovacs because there's no application for it so what I would do what I recommend honestly is just every day just loading up at least T-Hunt and spending at least 10-20 minutes because no matter how how much utility usage and droning you do, there's gonna be those engagements where you have to just win your gunfights, or at least not even win your gunfights, at least hit the shots. Cause even if you shoot, like you could be shooting someone in the back and miss, and it's really embarrassing. It happens to the best of us, I promise. So it's just one of those things where you have to spend a little bit of time training your aim and make sure that you can hit shots. And like, it doesn't have to be Gachi, you don't have to be the next Bolo. You don't have to be godly, you don't have to be any of that, but you have to just be able to hit some of your shots because it's very important because uh, your teammates maybe you like it's not going south and you're just in left something went south you're in a 1v1 and you just have to win the gunfight to win the round uh, so this is just one of those tips that you have to do if you want to be able to succeed and just get better so maybe you don't have the best aim right now but maybe you're playing on a bad sensitivity maybe I don't know what the situation might be for you particularly if you don't find the sensitivity your own is perfect I would recommend just spending a bit of time in terrorist hunt basically messing with sensitivity until you found something that you were comfortable with and fluid because it's not it's not like uber important but it is something that you should incorporate into your like everyday styles because if you want to win you have to have you have to be able to shoot back uh, I say this to my friends my friends say this to me whenever you like whenever we miss we just have to say like you die or something you just have to shoot back because it's just one of those things in siege where you can be as good as you like with support and droning but at the end of the day you have to hit a shot or two to, to win the game so I think you should incorporate some time, some time of your day just in training your aim. Uh, the next tip, some people like to tie in with aim, but I don't. It's going to be crosshair placement. Um, so when you're aiming head level in a game like Siege, it's just super important. Because you can have bad aim, but have good crosshair placement. And you're going to win engagements a lot more, even if it's people with better aim than you. Just because you're able to hit heads and they might hit you in the body. And in Siege with one-shot headshot, there's just no real justification to not be aiming head level unless like there's a crouch hole or you know they're crouching, then obviously just look down a bit. But for most situations, if you're aiming head level, even if someone swings you first, and I know there's like server latency and all that like bit of delay where they see you before you can see them, but they hit you in the body and you hit them in the head, you win that engagement just because how the game mechanics in this game works. Every gun in the game no matter what you're using from a pistol all the way to the r4c if you hit them in the head they die so you, you have a higher percentage chance of winning gunfights and it's just something you should incorporate into your gameplay because you can win a lot more like engagements even if you swing someone and you're aiming body level and they're aiming headshot level if you can see them you could be running the, you could be the best person in the world but you're shooting body shots and they shoot you in the head just with one bullet you lose so i just think it's something that is something you should include, incorporate into your gameplay and just make sure that you work on it uh, if you want to be a better player. The last but definitely not the least important tip that I'm going to be covering is going to be communication. Uh, it's it's really big in a game like Siege because you're able to figure out what your teammates are doing, what their plans are. If you're able to talk with them throughout the round and just see what everyone's up to. If someone dies, if you ask them to get on cams, don't assume they're going to get on cams. If you're on cams, say hey I'm on cams, say, say what you see, give all of those callouts, say what you're watching. 
it'll put you in a lot better position than if you're and it'll put you a lot less tilt if you know what everyone's doing because then if like it leaves you if you're in a gray area where like three people are dead and they don't see what they're doing and like you don't ask them to get on cams or you don't you just assume they're on cams then you lose because you just you're thinking things are happening you have to just communicate with your team like hey can someone get on the 90 hall cam i'm going to be saying main stairs i'm not going to be looking at it just let me know if you see anything just those little things will prevent you from being tilted and they will actually give your teammates purpose once they die and even if they're alive it just gives like, having purpose on a team and just knowing what everyone's doing is super big and it'll help you your gameplay like dramatically so don't don't assume things and just actually communicate and see what everyone's up to if you're in a clutch situation say you're in like a a 2vx it's just you and your teammate versus like three or four players see what they're doing see what they're watching ask what they're doing ask them if they have drones ask them if they have any intel ask them if they want to push something if they're going to push hey have them watch something like hey i'm going to push through office can you just watch my back that kind of thing instead of just assuming they're going to do that is really big because everyone plays differently so if you're able to communicate and just see hey I'm gonna push in office office here, man. Just watch the flank. This is very important. I need you to watch that. They're gonna do that. They're not gonna just watch the flank because you didn't say anything. They're not gonna just like, hey, I'm just gonna start watching. Like, like you have to ask them and communicate so everyone's on the same page and it avoids any confusion, which is just something that's undermined this game. And I think it can be used a lot more effectively, especially from lower ranks. And it'll help you be so much better. Just communicating and just asking your teammates to do things for you. Alright, but that's everything I have for you guys today for tips. I said I'd do five, so that was five. Uh, if you guys want to do, if you guys want me to do more of these kind of videos, I have lots of tips that I can try to help you guys out with and just help you guys climb the ranks and whatever. So if you guys want me to do more of these videos, just have to comment below or ask or anything like that, and I'll be more than happy to make more videos like this. I actually had a lot of fun making this video. I usually don't try to make these kind of videos. I usually just post gameplay. But I'm trying something new, so if you guys like it, just let me know. I, I can make more of these. I have lots of tips. I'm sure I can help a lot of people. So that's everything I have for you today. Uh, I'll Like I said before at the beginning of the video, I do try to stream every day around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to come check me out, watch me play, uh, that's what I'll be doing. But outside of that, that's pretty much everything I have for you guys. And just have a good day, guys.